we are going to make shortbreads. Now this is a proven recipe. We only need half a pound of butter, 250 grams, half a cup of caster sugar, and have your measure have your correct measurements. Four tablespoons of rice flour, two cups of plain flour, and a teaspoon of vanilla. That is all is needed. So it's most important to have your ingredients together so as you're not going to be running and looking for things and have all of your things fresh. Proven brands of flour, not lying in the cupboard for a week or months, rice flour and your caster sugar all beside you. And so we will proceed. <laughs> now, some of my friends, they just melt the butter. It's not as good. It is much better if you beat your butter until it's soft and creamy. That's, that is being proven, beat it. Just with a little hand beater, no expensive things here. And so we beat. And this is going to take, I'd say, between three and five minutes and we give it a good beating. Cream well. Have your butter slightly soft because it's very hard with these small beaters and their, and their little uh, engines to get it beating. So have it soft. Especially in the winter time you need to soften it a bit. And I always make with butter, not margarine. So we continue to bait and bait <laughs> and I don't make it in the big bowl because it gets away, the butter gets all around the sides. Better in a small contained where you can get <laughs> do your work well. All you need is a little spatula, tablespoon, and we're on our way. <laughs> Caster sugar. I used to keep them in airtight jars. You just need half a cup of caster sugar. Measure it out in your half cup measure. Some people don't weigh or measure, but I always do for good results. And so we gradually add the caster sugar, gradually add it, and keep beating. I try to just have simple things sitting around because I'm not like the demonstrators on the television that have somebody coming and doing the cleaning. Minimum amount of utensils. hand beat it very good. A little bit more sugar. Gradually add the sugar. The noise of the beaters, and it's, it would drive you mad sometimes, wouldn't it? This is this beat, beat, beat. Has to be done. You get it white and creamy. Not quite, but it's creamy. Scrape 
down the sides so as there's no flour or no sugar sticking to the sides. And I always like doors closed, no drafts coming in. I like an even temperature when I'm cooking. And I have the oven on 350. Moderate oven. Is that a teaspoon of vanilla? Teaspoon of vanilla. I don't buy the essence because it's a bit expensive. And I make a lot of this shortbread, so it's that other essence. This is just imitation. Just fine. And beat it in. Nice creamy consistency. Now we have two cups of plain flour, plain flour of a good brand, not the black and gold, not keen on that. Buy good quality stuff if you're going to bake. Two, one cup. Two cups. Like if it's, uh, I'm not always, a, I don't go out of the recipe. I try to keep strictly to the recipes, to the amounts. And this is rice flour. Gives it that gritty taste. Four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. And we just sift that into the bowl. We don't need to we don't need to sift it like as if we were making sponge cakes. Doesn't need a lot of that. So it doesn't take too many utensils, and so there's not much washing up. Come back and we'll give it another little beat. Now turn the beater down a little bit because I'm going to put in half the flour and then the other half I fold in. Because I don't want to beat the flour and make it like dough that you're going to roll out. This is shortbread we're making. And tell them we're busy. You're not going to answer? <laughs> tell them we're shooting. I'm sorry, I can't answer. <laughs> That actually is enough of beating because I like to fold the rest of the flour in. Disconnect the beaters. It's very simple, you see, very simple. Very simple recipe. We don't want to beat and beat the flour because that's not the answer for good shortbread. My experience. And I've been making it for years. I make all my friends shortbread at Christmas. 
and they seem to like it. And it's very personal. But I fold in the remaining of the flower with the spatula. So you can get, you can feel the consistency of it. You don't want it to be too soft. I certainly know after all the times that I've made it, if the consistency is right. So if it doesn't turn out well right the first time, keep trying. Keep trying. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, when I got married I couldn't bake a scone. Only thing I could do was beef tea for some invalid. So there's a great insight into this cooking. And now I'm doing a demonstration. Put that. It's like when you're making pastry, you know the consistency of it when, before you start rolling it. I don't handle this a great deal. And that's the last of the flour. no good making it in summer because your hands are too hot and it's just too big an effort. You just need to choose the right time to make pastry and shortbread. all of the flour is folded in. I hope you notice my cup here, mug, whatever you like to call it. This is, what do you call this mug from, from that program? She liked those mugs, the Royal Dawson. Now, I don't want a big board either because I just put it on this small, not, I don't put any more flour on the board because we've had the amount of flour. We don't want to hold that on the board. We don't need it on the board to roll it because we're not going to do that. I just put it into a, roll it into a ball, handle it like <laughs> this Royal Dalton here. That's all I do with it, like so. And I get my knife. Always have cloths around because you do get messy in the cooking. And I cut it like so first. Then I give that another little roll like so, because I don't want big pieces of shortbread. You only want, this is for afternoon tea, you just want a piece of shortbread, small piece. Now I just lightly grease the tray with really just the butter paper from the, I don't throw anything out or waste it. So I just put a little one there and a little one here and the other little one here, so that I'm, I will minimize the time and trays that I'm going to use for the oven. You have to be economical when you're cooking. And I flatten that out gently. Just treat it very carefully, like so. I do sort of pinch it a little bit around the sides to give it a little frilly edge.
and I don't like it too thick. You know, if you get a piece of shortbread, it's a bit doughy in the middle. I want a dainty piece of shortbread. See, I wouldn't cook with Jimmy Oliver. He makes too much noise and too many tins and things banging about that kitchen. Wouldn't fit in with my style. Now, the most important thing now is that you mark it out. Because if you don't mark it out, you can't mark it out when you've cooked it. So that's an important thing. That might look small, but it, it spreads, it spreads. So I mark that into eight pieces. Like so. Little triangles. My family always liked the little triangles. And the grandchildren, they like Granny's little triangles. It's very interesting. Very interesting. How about your grandchildren like triangles? But when they come, that's what they ask, the triangles. I even sent it to the States. Because their cakes are all far too sweet there anyway. Now we've cut that. You wouldn't be able to do it when it comes out of the oven. Vitally important to do it before. And the next important thing is to fork it down like so. Keeps it from rising and give it just a little decoration on the end there with the fork. You don't need elaborate stuff to make something taste good. When I go out and, and to eat or have afternoon tea and they want a dollar fifty for a piece of shortbread I could <laughs> I feel quite ill. I feel quite ill. <laughs> fork it down, very important, don't forget. I give it a good forking down. And it aerates it, it allows it then to cook through better. And just press your fork around the edges to give it a little crispy edge on it. See, like so. Are you seeing? <laughs> Hope you're following me. This is very technical. So there's 24 pieces. You know, if you set up a little stall for afternoon tea, you'd make a fortune. A piece of shortbread and a cup of coffee. It's four dollars. I'd be a multimillionaire. So we, that's what I do. I, I fork it down well. And then I like just to just put a little bit of caster sugar over the top. Sort of way it gives it a little finish to it. Into the oven. This oven is fan full, so it doesn't really matter on which shelf you put it. Fan force. I don't know quite what they mean by that, but fan blowing around in there. And I've got used to it now. Oh, I only got it last year. It cooks all right. But I don't handle it a great deal. I'm just three on this tray as well. This is out of the same amount of mixture as another three. So I usually get eight lots. So 64 pieces I end up with. I press it down just gently so as I don't want it too thick and try and making it even and edging in the edges of it so as it looks even and you'll know that the consistency is right when it doesn't stick to your hands that's a good you know sometimes if you have haven't had the right amount of flour, you'll find it sticky and you think, oh, it's not right. It's only fit for the bin. So you, you, you know by it, it's not sticking to my hands. And I sort of decorate it around a little bit. And then I knife it through. So as I get 
eight triangles. They might look small, but they come out big enough. And depending on your oven, the length of time for cooking is 20 minutes to half an hour. I find after 20 minutes you need to watch it. And every oven is different. This oven definitely, this fan forced oven cooks quicker. So you need to watch. It says half an hour on the recipe, but you'll have burnt offerings. Fork it down, fork it well. And when, when it comes out of the oven, we're going to go through those lines again that we've made when we, we've divided it into the eight. And give it a little bit of, a little bit of fork around the side so it gives that nice crusty edge to it. Good forking. But you can try melting the butter, but it is not, the, the taste is not right. The ingredients don't mix well, and it doesn't keep as well. Beat the butter and the sugar well. As you can see, you don't need too much space. Very small area to make this. And fork it down a little bit a little bit and a little bit of caster sugar so you see I've got three lots there and I know it's not going to spread to run into one another so there isn't a problem there Have you got that on camera now? that's what it looks like on your slide you can see it it's just like three big pancakes into the oven we go this is just a smaller trip because I've just got the two pieces. So I divided the quantity in half and you see three went on one and three the other. I work sort of way that I know the size of my oven and how it works. I don't always bake with gold bracelets, let me tell you. I love people who say, oh, I just throw it all in together. I've never been, I have to weigh and measure correctly to get good results. These people that can throw flour and butter and everything in, and not my sign, I'm sorry. Measure and weigh. And have all your ingredients ready so you're not, oh, I've run out of this or that. It's a bit of a nuisance. doesn't take long to make. It's the cooking time is the, is the big time. Just gently fork it around. I always can make things better when I've watched people I like to see people how they do it and then I can, it doesn't always turn out right the first time, but it's a tried and safe recipe. I'll even give you a piece to taste. But they will I left it. Yeah. Hello. Do I press that green thing? What do I do here, Aunt Lou? Press the green thing. Hello. Hello. Just go on. Hello.
Вот. Согласен? And just a little bit of sugar on the top, and this is ready for the oven. But I'm not, because I have two lots in the oven, I just let that sit there until the others have cooked. I'm going to take them out of them, they've been in 20 minutes. And I find that's enough. So I've brought the one lot out. I brought the other lot up to the top shelf there so that I can see it better. And I put the last lot in. Got to think of your energy part. Now, this is very important, that's why I put on my glasses. I follow through the lines where I cut before. And you do that while it's hot. Mustn't wet. Most important. Now you see how it's much larger now. And you see it hasn't all bumped up and follow through with your lines that you made where you cut through before. Now if you didn't cut through before you put it into the oven, you couldn't really do it now because it'd be, you would have a lot of crumbs and quite messy. Now allow them to cool on the tray. So I set that tray aside because I have the rack over there that I cool them on. I set them aside and I wait for the next batch. Now I like them, I don't like, I like them fairly well cooked, light brown. I don't like them white, light brown because you get the crispy edge and you get that, your rice flour, the taste of it then, better. I've been doing it for 30 years, so I'm a bit tired of people saying my shortbread's the better, but you know, everybody thinks theirs is the better. Now the other, is, won't be long, another few minutes we have to wait and just allow those to cool. Are we still, this is dropping. I'm getting quite hot with all this. I tell you, just needs a few more minutes. Don't take it out unless you think it's cooked. Just to hurry it along, you just have to wait. Patience is a virtue. But oh, Jimmy Oliver and that noise that he makes in the kitchen and banging trays and I don't know what he's talking about half time. However, he gets a big amount of money. I just can set up a little stall out the front. And it's a great pastime. You know, you can look out your garden and I've got a barrel full of petunias there. It's, it's quite... It's better than watching the telly. There's nothing on it, only the football. It's quite boring. Actually, this is Mother's Day and I'm demonstrating how to make shortbread on TNV. I had po well, yes, that was all right. This, this uh, oven has a timer. If I could work it, <laughs> it says push the button and stop and the bell will ring. It's just very complicated. The watch is the easiest, simple things. Well, you're, you're going to finish when we do this, but... You know, all the, the demonstrating models, they've always got 
you know the one that they've just cooked that doesn't happen here you just have to wait you usually bring another lot out of the just all done look this is how it looks that's not the same in this place you've got to wait and this is cooked now sharp knife follow the lines that you made before you put it into the oven and sharply go through the lines so as if you've got each little triangle separating very cleanly some people dust the, the caster sugar after it has come out I like to cook it in the oven so as you get that sort of texture on the top but leave it on the tray don't take it off the tray and when I see it separate I know when I don't see any marks in the shortbread you know like a doughy line that it's right so it's right I just left one piece up to show you that there's no doughy line through it it is cooked but I leave it on the heated tray to cool and then I'll put it onto the oh, I'm coming adrift here again now that's and I allow it to cool now the most important is to put it into containers airtight containers to keep it it'll keep for at least six weeks if you don't eat it <laughs> airtight containers very important thank you for watching